I'm Rupert Cattell. Yeah. Uh, I'm Group Managing Director of a company called the Brucor Group. You should start the process of selling your business the moment you start to lose the passion and the interest for the business. So pretty much when you're starting to think about selling is when you should be starting to sell. Uh, because the sale of a business will take as long as it takes. Um, if somebody tells you they can sell your business in six weeks, it's absurd. It's very, very unlikely that, that would ever happen. You've got to be looking at potentially a year, um, hopefully yes, possibly more. Um, and you need to have the enthusiasm and the passion to continue running your business while it is up for sale. And what you don't want to do is you do not want to be selling your business when you've absolutely had enough and every day is um, you know, sort of gritted teeth, not wanting to be there, fed up with it. Because what will happen is it will start to impact on your business. And not only will you see the business start to lose shape and direction, but it will also start to lose its profitability as well. And the profitability will affect your asking price. I think if you're going to read about economic forecasts, you want to read in depth about it. I think if you're re reading the headlines of the Daily Mail, um, you're going to get a very skewed picture of exactly what's happening in the future. Um, so I think it is worthwhile talking to people about it. Uh, I think you need to talk to a number of people about it rather than just one or two so you start to get a better flavour and a more balanced view about exactly where the economy is going. Um, vendors, yes of course they listen, but obviously they are also being driven by the fact that they might have lost the passion for the business, they might want to get out, they might have reached a certain age, they might be suffering from some sort of ill health, in which case there are a whole bunch of different drivers uh, as to why they're actually selling the business. Well, I think when you're a seller, what you want to do is you want to disclose uh, all the warts and issues and wrinkles of your business very early on. And you need to be talking to your agent about that. Uh, because the last thing that a purchaser wants is to find a surprise. You know, they think they're buying something, everything is going swimmingly well, and then suddenly they uncover something, some skeleton in the cupboard. So again, I think you need to have it out on the table so that it is all clear, clear from the very beginning, because that goes to the heart of the issue, which is the honesty and, and integrity of the vendor. Purchasers are driven by fear. I think it's pretty essential. Um, because I think the purchaser will be concerned if you don't offer it. Um, again, it quite often depends upon the personalities. Um, some purchasers want to have a vendor there for a very short space of time because they're going to make some fairly major changes uh, and they don't want the overhang of somebody saying, oh, I wouldn't do it like that because we didn't do it like that. Um, others, on the other hand, would like the idea of having a very slow handover uh, because they need the assurance um, that the vendor uh, is going to be around um, and to some extent it is a demonstration of faith in the strength of the business that the vendor is not just going to go and nick off uh, and, and disappear over the horizon. There should be very clear indications as to when the, the deal is starting to go off the rails. So for example if a purchaser is offering to put down 20% or 25% of the purchase price and you as a vendor know that they could probably borrow against the assets to cover that sort of down payment, you know that there is probably very little money else around and that you are going to be asked shortly for uh, either deferred payments or vendor finance. And those sorts of deals should be ringing alarm bells with vendors and with their agents.